Hello, this is Lynx Tetsu, and welcome to my next Armored Core 4 Dummies video. This video is going to be about the stats in Armored Core 1 for all of the parts. In this video, we'll be going over the general and specific Armored Core stats, what they do, and how they interact with each other. We'll also be going into the specific stats each part type can have. These will mostly apply to Armored Core 1, but carry over through most of the games. This video specifically covers Armored Core 1 through Armored Core Master of Arena, so some stats may not apply to Armored Core 1 specifically, or the names have been changed slightly as the sequels came out. This video is going to be covering, for most of it, but the entire series instead of one separately, because I don't want to do 15 stat videos, one for every single game, and you don't need or want to watch 15 stat videos saying the same thing every time. Each game, however, will get its own shorthand for the new stats when the build videos are done for those specific games to help you figure out what's changed since the prior installment. This will be the most word heavy of the videos. It's unfortunately just raw information and there's not much I can do about trying to shorthand it, but I want to make sure that any possible way a stat does something that you understand what it is because the game does not explain a lot of it. So the general stats for Armored Core that are on multiple parts are AP or Armor Points, which is your health. This is on your head, core, arms, and legs. Then there is the Shell Defense stat, which is your physical defense against bullets, missiles, explosions, or anything of the, the like, which is a physical hit. Energy Defense is your defense against energy weapons, such as lasers, plasma, and for some reason bioweapons, most organic Enemies in this game deal laser damage for some reason. Weight, which is the part's weight or how much it weighs. Energy drain, which is the passive energy drain on a part just for having it equipped on your armored core. Okay, so the next three stats will be on the bottom right of the garage and aren't necessarily on a specific part, but are a total stats for all of your parts. The EP, which is the first one, is the total energy drain of all of your parts combined are the number that's on the left, a slash, and then the right side is your generator's energy output. The excess between these is your energy recovery or how fast your energy comes back. So if all of your parts total have an energy drain of 5,000 and your generator has an output of 9,200, the excess 4,200 is what's used for refilling the energy gauge. Leg WP or legs weight point. This is how much your legs can hold according to your weight. So the number on the left is your total weight of all of your parts, not counting the legs because they're not lifting themselves. The right side is the maximum weight your legs can lift. You don't want your total weight to exceed the max weight your legs can hold. Next one is your core weight points, which is the left side is the weight of your arms plus your right and left arm weapon and the right side is the weight your core can hold. You don't want to exceed the max your core can hold. This will really only come into play if you're using a light core and for some reason very heavy arms or a very heavy weapon such as the right arm Kurosawa laser. So the next thing we're gonna go into is to start going over the unique stats for each part. These are the ones that pertain to the head. So the first stat for the head is the computer type with the options being rough, standard, and detailed. This is how much information your head gives you about enemies such as other armored cores while on a mission. Typically when a boss type enemy shows up or something unique or different, based on which option your head has, it'll start going into a detail of potentially the enemy's name, raven rank, what their types of attack are, what the shell or energy they use, close range, long range, or what it recommends you do. The next stat for the head is the map type, with the options being no memory, area map, and then area and place name. Explained very poorly by what it does, this is how your AC gets and displays the map when you press the select button during a mission. No memory only shows the room you're in, area memory shows the current room as well as the rooms you've been to, and area and place name includes everything area memory does but also includes labels of areas of the map such as where you came in from for missions you have to get back to the entrance and in some games also where all of the targets are on the map even if you haven't reached that part yet on the map the next stat for the head is the noise canceller 
which is basically electronic countermeasure resistance, or ECM as the game calls it. Some levels, enemies, or weapons interrupt your ability to lock onto a target or see them on your radar. This helps prevent or reduce the effect. In Armored Core 1, this is just a yes you have it or no you don't have it, but later games change it into a numerical value so that you can try to overcome it with stats opposed to just yes or no. The next stat on a head is the Biosensor, which lets you lock on to organic enemies like bugs, ticks, and people. So the next stat on the head is the Radar Function, which is just yes it has it or no it doesn't. This lets you know if the head has a built-in radar so you don't have to carry one on your back. This is almost never as good as an actual radar you carry on your back due to the update time of how often the radar actually refreshes or as well as the range, but for most people this is all you really need and you don't need the further radar. The next stat is radar range, which is the range of the built-in radar if it exists in the head. And the next one is radar type. The only option for head is standard, which is the square shape radar, while some back radars have a circular radar. This is basically how it displays and kind of affects the range of it. The next set of stats are going to be the unique core stats. First one is max weight, which is the core weight point we mentioned before. For the total weight of arms and the arm weapons, you can lift with the core. The next stat is anti-missile response, which this is your core's effectiveness of shooting down missiles before they hit you by themselves. And then the anti-missile angle is the total angle and radius from the front middle of the core that this response can aim. You will see this working as a laser shooting out of the core at the missile. So starting from just straight forward middle height of the core, there's a cone that if a missile is flying at you in that cone, it'll try to shoot it down for you to keep it from hitting you. And the last stat for the cores are the extension slots. The cores have extension slots which you can place the optional slot parts into. Each optional slot part has a specific cost of how many slots and various effects listed by the part, such as more energy or shell defense, more maximum energy for boosting or anything else, faster energy weapon fire rate, faster energy... The next stat for the core is the extension slots. The cores have extension slots which you can place optional part slots into. Each has a specific cost and has various effects listed by the part, such as more shell defense, energy defense, more maximum energy, faster energy weapon fire rate, reduced cost for firing the energy weapon, or even increased energy weapon damage. It's basically just extra stats you pay for that may not be able to be affected in any other spot. We are skipping unique arm stats because the arm in this game does not have any unique stats, but it does affect aiming and other things later, which will be brought up at that time. The next stats we're going to be going into is your legs. The first stat is what type of legs they are for humanoid legs or biped as most people call them. Uh, reverse joint legs which are the legs are basically bent backward like a bird. These have highly increased jump, not as fast as the bipeds particularly but have a lower energy cost on average which makes it easier to spend time in the air and for, and for later have reduced recoil from cannons. Then there's also the, the four legs type, which the community calls a quad, or the caterpillar leg type, which people refer to as a tank. Humanoid legs also come in lightweight, medium weight, and uh, as, uh, as well as heavyweight. Humanoid legs come in lightweight, medium weight, and heavyweight. They are not split in name until much later in the actual franchise, but there's clearly differing stats for walking speed how easily they are to stun, as well as the defense and AP, which will make it very noticeable if you try a few of them out. The stats for the legs are max weight, the max weight minus the leg's own weight, but counting everything else you have on is the total... So the next unique stat for the legs is the, is the max weight. The max weight is the maximum weight for the total of all of the parts besides the legs themselves that they can hold. The next stat is speed. This is base walking movement speed while not boosting. Then there is stability, which later on is split into defensive stability and landing stability. This is your ability to resist stun when hit, knockback when hit, and stagger when hit or when falling from a certain height. 
one important thing when you're boosting or bunny hopping or anything else is that when you're going too high and come down, you want to boost it before you land to prevent stunning yourself. Then the last stat is the jump function, which is your ability to jump. Tanks can't jump and later games also have a leg type called hover, which isn't introduced yet that also can't jump. Reverse joints, as mentioned before, get an extra bonus to their height on jumps. Later games make it an actual visible number on the leg so you can tell which legs jump better than others. The next stat we're going for is the generator stats. The energy output is the first and main stat on generators. The total output of the generator or how fast it generates energy. This stat is reduced by all of your parts total combined energy drain and what's left is your total output or how fast it actually refills. So in a lot of cases, the output is better or more important than the next stat of maximum charge. This is your total energy amount that you can hold or you can view it as your energy reserve. This is used when firing energy weapons or boosting. Energy weapons in Armored Core 1 don't specify the fire cost for energy, but you can sort of link it to the attack power of, of the actual weapon and it becomes a numerical number later. Reason why I say outputs it's a lot of times more important is if you can get the output to be higher than you use it, it doesn't necessarily matter how much you have. Then the last stat for the generator, which is very confusing for most people, so I would just pay attention here because again it says it nowhere. On the left side of the screen there's a visible red section for the energy gauge. Boosting uses it at a reduced rate while you're in that red section, but it also refills at a, at a reduced slower rate also. However, firing energy weapons do not cost less when using this portion of the gauge. So for the purpose of boosting, it's a bit beneficial as the cost reduction outweighs the refill reduction. But it's worse in any case for using an energy weapon because you can, besides that it's the last portion of the generator and if you hit zero, you immediately, it, you can't boost or anything at all that uses energy. And you have to wait for it to fully refill before you can use it again. The next stat we're... The next part we're going to be talking about are the stats for the fire control system or the FCS. The FCS affects the lockbox, which is the area on your screen you can lock on and target in. There are three types of lock. No lock, stage one where it changes color and it aims at them, and stage two where it locks on further or better and leads the shots to help you hit moving targets. Most people don't realize that stage two is there, but if you test a bit, especially with a higher fire rate weapon, you will notice that it's there. So the first stat on them is maximum lock. Missiles have a lock number of how many locks they can stack. However, it still can't exceed the number of locks that are actually on the FCS. So to lock six times, both the FCS and the missile need to have six locks. You can watch it actually stack the locks as numbers and symbols over the target as you're keeping them within the actual lock box. And then when you fire, it fires each lock out as a chain. At that point, you also don't have to keep the lock box on them once you start to fire. Then the last stat on them for this game is lock type. There is standard, which is the regular square box and the one you start with. They typically have an average distance and average weapon utility. You can really use them with almost anything. The next type is wide and shallow, which is a much larger box but shorter lock distance. They're also usually poor on, on missiles because of not having locks or the range to really use them, but they're great for things like machine guns, shotguns, or other weapons you want to use close range, because it's also much easier to keep them inside the range, or inside the box to shoot them. The next type is narrow and deep, which is a much smaller lock box, but it's a long lock distance. It's good for snipers and cannons. Lengthway is a tall but thin widthwise lockbox. It's medium long lock distance. Helps for vertical tracking if you have a hard time tracking things that jump or go up. And it's also fairly good with, uh, with cannons as well. It's the sideways lockbox, which is wide but short lockbox. So it's very wide but not tall. So it helps you for keeping track of things going side to side that aren't moving. Now moving that aren't really jumping or flying. This is a typically a medium lock distance. And it's also very good with missiles normally. They tends to have a very high number of locks built in. 
So the next part we're talking about is the booster and the booster stats. Please note tanks cannot equip boosters. They have their own built-in ones. Unfortunately, the values for them are hidden in Armored Core 1, but visible in the later generations. Same for when they introduce hover legs. They have a built-in booster. This information is included on this page because it's about the booster itself and not the legs. First stat is boost power, which is the strength of the, of the booster, which can be viewed as the higher the number, the faster you go. The next stat is the charge drain, or how fast the booster consumes the energy over time when in use. You will not regenerate energy while actually boosting. It'll only start to regenerate when it's off. The charge drain is going to be higher than what you get. The combination of these two stats are why the bunny hop is typically used, because you can quickly give yourself a strong yeet on a jump and pick up speed and then just let it carry you as you're in the air not boosting or falling back down while still sustaining the high speed variable movement because as soon as you boost in the air you will keep the speed until you hit the floor or start trying to boost in a different direction. The next parts we're going to be talking about are the back and arm weapon stats. Radar function which is is this a radar which is none or provided. Not sure why it's a stat, because you should be able to tell if a part's a radar. The rest of radar's stats were covered on the heads page. The next weapon stat is weapon lock, which is standard or special. If it is standard, it follows whatever on the FCS part. The next stat is the weapon lock, which is either standard or special. Standard follows the regular lock inside the FCS. But some of them have a special lock type which augments the lockbox from the FCS. It's usually used as a balance, so you can't just have a ridiculously high powered cannon or arm laser weapon or anything like that and then just say I'm going to go fast and use it very close with a wide shallow lockbox so no one can dodge. So the next stat is the attack power which is the weapon's damage. The following stat is the number of ammo which is how many rounds the weapon has. The next stat is solid or, or energy, which is the type of damage that this weapon deals. This damage is reduced by the target's corresponding defense for energy or shell defense. It is not a one-to-one -one scale where 50 shell defense blocks 50 shell damage. It is a weird sliding scale, kind of like how Dark Souls worked. The next stat is the, is the ammo price, which is the cost per round of ammo you fire, or the cost for every bullet. All energy weapons in this game and the first seven have zero ammo cost. The next stat is the range, which is the range of the weapon. You can pay attention to this as the FCS in this game doesn't specify the lock distance. And I don't believe locking on does, but later games the FCS also tells you what the lock range is as well as when you're locked on it tells you how far away the target is. Then the next stat is the maximum lock number which is a stat for different missiles which is the number of multi-locks a, a missile can get to chain fire. Some missiles if you read the description fire multiple missiles on just one lock and will still only have a multi-lock of one. The last stat is the reload time, which is the fire rate of the actual weapon. Okay, so the lower the number, the faster the fire rate. I think the number has something to do with like how many frames for every shot, but that's not necessarily how it works, but that's sort of how you can view it. Lower fire rate is, or for the number means you fire faster. Hey everyone, Editor Captain Dirk here. Thank you for watching the video. Remember to like and subscribe, and if you have anything you would like to learn about specifically in the Armored Core games, make sure to leave a comment so that we know what you want next.